Hey folks, Todd Colburn here with your Aerospace Structure Series. This is Lecture 2 on getting started with MATLAB. And with this one, we're going to go down and pull MATLAB up and look at the commands together. Let's take a look at how this works. Okay, folks. So let's go ahead and open MATLAB. Now what I like to do is I like to pin MATLAB to this lower bar here with all my most important tool. So I'm going to click on it here to open it. You may need to go over the leftmost set of programs to open it up. When we first open it like this, it's going to open one command window, as you see here. So we see the uh, here is the command window for MATLAB, and uh, you will see, mm, so we've got the current folder window, we've got the details window, we've got the workspace window, and here in the middle we've got the command window. So let's go ahead and play with some things. Like let's say we, uh, let's call out the number 5. MATLAB just responds and enter. See how it just printed what I had? Let's define a variable name A equals 5. Now MATLAB says, okay, got that. So now if we type A, enter, MATLAB says, well, that's 5. Let's say A times 5. Now MATLAB already knows that A is 5, and it multiplies by 5. So you can actually use MATLAB like a calculator. Of course, that's a complete waste of MATLAB. Let's define a matrix. Let's define a row matrix. We do an open bracket, 1 space, 2 space, 3, close bracket, now, we didn't name it, so MATLAB is going to repeat our vector, but it doesn't actually know what it's called. So let's do it again. And this, oh, another thing you can do is you can use the up arrow key to get the last command. Look, I'm going to use the up arrow key. I'm hitting up arrow. That's the last command. That's the one before that. That's the one before that. I'm going to use the down arrow. This is the command I want. So you can actually pull up a prior command. I'm now going to use the, the arrow key to go over to here, and I'm going to say A equals, so I can actually save myself a little bit of typing time. Now I've defined A as 1, 2, 3. If I type A, bang, 1, 2, 3. Now let's say, ah, this is getting kind of crowded. I don't like all this crap in my window. So we can go up here to clear commands, bang, and it will clear all the commands. Now we didn't actually clear the variable. We can see that by just typing A, and it tells us it still knows what A is. So we didn't clear the variables we cleared the command uh, window. So let's say we have another matrix B, like we talked about in our last video. B equals, and let's make this 10, semicolon 20, semicolon 30. Right? That's a column matrix. Now we can say A times B, and we get that and multiply it out. That's going to hit 1 times 10 plus 2 times 20 plus 3 times 30 is B. Bang. Matrix operations. Let's say A equals, uh, oh, let's try this. Let's say C equals, open the bracket, 1 comma 2 comma 3. Close bracket. Same thing. So you can actually use a space or a comma with the same result. But to get to the next row, you're going to need a semicolon. We could have also called out, let's make the B matrix a different way. And we'll call it the D matrix. D equals open bracket. And we'll say 10 space 20 space 30. And close bracket. Now that's actually going to be a row vector. Your buddy says, no, no, that's supposed to be a column vector. Say, I can fix that. We'll just hit a little single quote mark. And that defines that as the transpose. If we hit D now, it already shows that D is that. Now let's try something else. Let's say E equals D transpose. That's going to make E a row vector equal to the magnitude of D, but as a row vector. See how that works? Okay. But actually the real power of MATLAB is in the programs. Okay. So let's go ahead and make a program together. We're going to hit. Now if we had a program already, like if I'd open, you'll see all these bunch of programs that I've made. But we're going to create a new program as if we've never done this before. So we're going to hit the plus button, and we're going to just call it a script. Bang, there it is. First thing we're going to do is name it. So I'm going to encourage you to do this. We're going to call, write the function command, function, space, and then we're going to need the name of 
the file. And you actually want to give your functions, looks like I misspelled it. You're going to want to give your functions the same name as the file name so MATLAB doesn't get confused. So we'll call this one uh, MATLAB Lesson 1. Okay? Oh, and actually MATLAB recognizes upper and lowercase. So what I like to do, since it doesn't like spaces and names and things, MATLAB, and I use the... Uh, I use upper and lowercase to help differentiate words so I can run them all together. Then we're going to put an open and close parenthesis. This is all you need for a function. Let's make this command. And let's also good practice to use the return command. That's going to define the start and end of our program. Let's go ahead and save it. Okay. You can now pick a place of where you want to save it. I'm going to save it here in my documents folder. I have a MATLAB folder. And uh, I'm going to store it in the MATLAB folder under CPP Learning MATLAB. That's the folder I'm going to put it in. And, uh, oh, let's learn MATLAB. That's, let's go ahead and call it MATLAB Lesson 1. Save that puppy. Okay. Now, if we run this program, there's uh, you say we saved the program, and I like to save a lot. We can also run the program. Now, it doesn't actually have this program in the path. So it says, hey, look, this is not in the current path. This program you just created is not in the place that MATLAB normally looks. If you just open MATLAB and just type this name, it's not going to know it's there. Do you want to add to the path? You can hit add to the path, so it adds it to the path. And that will add it to the path uh, permanently, possibly, if you have administrative rights. Sometimes it's just a uh, temporary add. You may have to do that over and over again if you don't go in and change the administrative functions. So now we've added that. So actually we can just run the program by running it like this, by hitting the run button. That writes right up there. Or we can write the name of the program, MATLAB Lesson 01, and it does, and it runs the program. Let's try that again. Now this program is Oh, another a good programming tool, anytime you're doing any kind of programming, is to run your program over and over. Don't even add more than a couple lines, if you can help it, without rerunning the program. What happens is debugging programs is a lot harder than writing them, and it can be really hard to find an error. So, what you, one time I was writing a Fortran program. I'd written many Fortran programs in my work for McDonnell Douglas, and I had this program that I'd written. It was doing stress analysis or section properties or something. And I ran the program. I'd been using it a lot. I made it a small change, and all of a sudden my program stopped working. And I couldn't find it. I searched for a few days looking for this error. Finally, I went to the rightmost end of every line of my code, put my cursor there, and I blank spaced over every blank space to the right for every line. Tried to run. Everything ran fine. I have no idea what happened. Some kind of control character got in there. I don't know. So you, MATLAB, uh, computers and programs are finicky. So you want to run a lot so it's easier to isolate what you changed so you can figure out what went wrong. So we're going to be hitting run a lot even when we do barely hardly anything. Let's go ahead and make a program. And to make this program, we'll define our first matrix. We'll call it A. And we'll make it, let's give it a value of, let's call this like, a, let's say we're going to do like some kind of stiffness calculation. Actually, let's call this matrix K. How about we'll call this K. And we're going to give it values of 3, comma, 3, no, 3E6, 5E6, oops, E6, comma, 2E6. Now we're going to go to the next column, the next row, semicolon, uh, 7E6, comma, 2E6, comma, let's give it a soft stiffness, uh, 3E3, ooh, that'll be interesting, semicolon, and one more column, uh, I mean, one more row, 
two e six semicolon uh, comma five e six. I'm making this up rather than actually having a number. Okay, let's take a look and see. Oh, that's a big step. Ah, fine. Let's see. We've got this first row has three elements. Second row has three elements. Third row has three elements. Let's go ahead and uh, let's run this program. Bang. Now what MATLAB does, it looks, it runs the first command. It just says, oh, I got a program here. It runs the second command. It says, oh, I'm going to sign K with this matrix value. And because it's written here, it writes it to the command window, as you can see there. Then it finds return, which means, ah, program's done. So we see that was the whole result of our program. Now let's say when we're debugging, we want to see everything MATLAB is doing, but later we might not. Let's say later we decide we don't want to see K. You can actually do that by putting a semicolon here. If you put a semicolon at the end of the line, what's going to happen is MATLAB is going to say, oh, this guy or gal doesn't want to see this command in the command window. Let's try running now. We see that we ran because we see the name of the program was put here again, and now nothing happens, or it looks like nothing happened. Actually, the exact same thing happened. The only difference is this time MATLAB didn't print it to the screen since it found this semicolon. If instead we had a comma, it goes back to printing it to the screen. If we have a blank space, it goes back to writing to the screen. If we want a comment, we put a percentage sign and say stiffness we can put anything here okay enter now let's make another thing let's give it a let's make a let's say we have a system of equations which where this three by three matrix represents the stiffnesses and we're going to need a column matrix to rec represent the deflections in three say directions so let's say x equals and we're going to make a column matrix. And the easiest way to do that, we can either do it with a number, semicolon, number, semicolon, number, or we can do it with a number, comma, number, comma, number, uh, single quote. Let's look at the two ways. That's, uh, let's make this uh, point 0.1, semicolon, point 0.5, semicolon, point 0.05. That's it. Let's also make one y equals this is a totally different one. And this time we will use uh, 0.1 semicolon 0.5, no, comma 0.5, comma 0.05. Now you'll notice this time I made a row vector, but what I'm going to do is put a little apostrophe here. Now look what happens. I'm going to hit enter. It comes to the first stiffness. It repeats. Here's our new run writes the value of this that we just defined, writes this vector that we just defined, writes that vector. Now you notice we define this one as a row vector and this one as a, as a row vector also, but this one, uh, this row vector, oh, excuse me, we define this as a column vector. You can see this by the semicolons. This we defined as a row vector, but that single quote made that the transpose, which makes this the exact same matrix. So let's go get ahead and get rid of this Y matrix. Let's hit run again. Let's go ahead and you don't believe me running? Let's clear all commands. Great. Now let's run this puppy again and you see, oh yeah, that's what it does. It's doing each command. Now let's go ahead and multiply. Let's say uh, that uh, F, let's make it uppercase, equals KX. K times X. That's going to do the matrix multiplication of those two matrices, matrices together, enter, and you see it, it echoes back our K, it echoes back our X, and then it does the matrix multiplication for us, which gives us this value. Now we talked about in our last, uh, um, let's go ahead and say, well, what's X? If we just hit X at the command line, has not stored it in here. When we were running the program, it stored it in a local variable, but it wasn't. Now, if we had defined X on this screen, like we did earlier, then it would know what it is. But because we defined it in our program, it cleaned that variable out, and it doesn't 
actually know what X is anymore. It only knows it as you're running this program. Let's go ahead and say, all right, uh, so we found, let's call this F2 equals, and let's give it the same value of what we just found here. 29, oh, what's that, Ten, 5? Deals, semicolon, 1712150, semicolon, 67, is that 5345? Five? Okay, let's try that now. Let's say, let's say we have a system of equations. We know F equals KX, but let's use F2 and K to solve for X and see what happens. So let's say uh, x2 equals, and what we're going to need to do is divide k into, so we're going to say k slash, which is like the inverse of k, uh, backslash, which slash is, I think it's the slash, k slash x. And let's try that puppy out. Bang. Wrong deal. Let's see, we need the backslash right that's what we needed bang there it is and it solves for x in the same manner let's try this oh i did the wrong thing not times x times a f2 Let's try that. Bang. Now we're back to our original number. We can fix this one. This was wrong. We wanted to uh, divide it into F2. Let's call this X3. Enter. Okay. Now check this out. So here's what we did. We defined our K. We defined our X. And then we calculated F equals KX. We got the value of x. Then what we did is we're pretending that we don't know what x is, and we're solving having been given f, which we now called f2, and k we're solving for x2. These two commands are identical. One of them uses the inverse of k times f, which is f2, which is the matrix multiplication. It takes the inverse of the k and brings it over to multiply against f2. The other one is using this backslash, which does the same thing, tells MATLAB to do the same thing. These two commands are equivalent, as we see here, and we, in this case, both cases, we get the same exact value. That's the power of MATLAB for computing. You'll notice we're solving systems of equations. This is, uh, let's put a little comment here. This, this uh, explicitly, computes, uses the inverse to solve the system of equations. And we can say up here, this uses the shortcut method. Got it? And those are just comments, so they don't actually do anything. Our program still runs fine. Let's clear our commands, run our program again. You now have a program that does everything you need. Let's go ahead and get rid of this line. And let's, we'll just comment that out. We'll leave that for later and we'll separate it from the other stuff. MATLAB's not doing anything with the blanks. Let's go ahead and uh, let's, let's actually comment out all this down here. And let's go ahead and let's rerun our program. And now we just have KX and we're calculating F. Now let's say we want to actually see uh, a more, uh, a prettier, uh, well, this is good enough. Let's go ahead and make a new program. So we're going to save this again. We're going to start a new program. So we're going to, let's make a new one. We'll say, uh, let's clear this command window and let's pick a new command script we're going to name this puppy function 
and we're going to call this uh, strain. Uh, let's call this, uh, what do we call the other one? MATLAB section or something? Let's call this uh, ML strain. ML learn strain. There we go. All right. So we're going to give it, those are, we got the, and we got the return. And now let's say, all right, let's, uh, this is something we know, right? Let's say we know what the modulus is. It's 10 to the sixth, 10 E six. That sounds like aluminum. And let's go ahead and say the strain little lower KC equals 0 0.005. And we want to know what the stress is. Well, we know what Hooke's Law says. So we'll say S, we'll call stress S, equals EE. -E. And if we run that program, oh, it needs to save it. So let's cancel this. Let's go ahead and save. Save as. Let's go back to our CPP Learn MATLAB. And we'll call this... Uh, Oh, no, we need to give the same name as we had. Hmm. Otherwise, it's going to have an issue. So we'll call this uh, ML Learn Strain. Stain, that's not right. Rain. And save. Bang. Now we're ready to run that puppy. Bang. And, oh, look, I forgot to multiply. See that? MATLAB doesn't know what to do with those two. So we're going to put a, time, a multiplication sign. Let's clear our command window just so this looks clean. Hit run again. And now we see it echoes our E, it echoes our epsilon, and it echoes our stress. Now it looks like crap, though. So let's go ahead and make it prettier. Remember that fprintf command that we looked at? Let's go ahead and do that. Let's put the command fprintf, and we're going to open parenthesis. We're going to write it to the screen, so we're going to put a 1 there. And then we're going to put in between here, stuff we want. Now, check this out. I'm doing this sloppily on purpose, and I'm just going to stop there. I'm going to go over here, and I think that's all I need. Let's go ahead and run this puppy. Bang. See what happens? It echoes our name of the program, echoes the E, echoes the epsilon, echoes the stress, and then it writes stuff we want. Now you'll notice it didn't go to a new line, so it puts that cursor that says, remember that dog running back like it's ready for you to throw the ball? That cursor says, I'm ready for you to throw the ball, but because I didn't tell it to go to the new line, it puts it right at the end of what we wrote. Now if I had put in the command sequence, let's put in a period, which we don't actually need, and let's put slash backslash n. That's the command sequence. Says go to the next line before you ask for the ball again. Let's run again. Bang. And now you'll notice it added the, the period and it also put a new line there. You see that? Let's go ahead and uh, now let's make this cleaner. Let's say we want to print out, we want to print out the value of S. So if we put comma S back here, what it's going to do, let's say instead we'll say, all right, what we want to write is stress equals E epsilon equals, now what's going to happen? This F printf is going to write to the command window. It's going to write stress space equals space E space little e space equals space. And then it's going to go to the new line and it's going to write stress. That's what it's going to do. That's not what we want, but that's what it's going to do. Oh, it didn't even write stress because it has nowhere to put it. It wants to write stress with the way this string told it to write stress, and there was nothing telling it how to write a number. See down here? No number. So now what we're going to do is add that command sequence. Print uh, percentage. We're going to need a percentage and an F. And I'm going to go ahead and put a couple spaces here. You don't need to do that before the new line. Now what we're going to put in here, 
how big is a stress? Well, a stress in U.S. units is going to be, you know, probably uh, not more than six digits. It's probably going to be like 50 KSI, 80 KSI, 40 KSI. So let's go ahead and we'll say we'll use, uh, so that means if we want to write this out as a stress, we're going to need one, two, three, four, five, maybe six digits. So let's make this eight digits, point zero. We want nothing to the right of the decimal place because a PSI less than one is for meaningless for most materials we're going to be dealing with. That's going to use eight spots. Actually, we don't need eight. Let's make it six spots. And then let's go ahead and write the units. This is going to be in PSI. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this. What this is going to do now, it's going to write stress equals. It's using a formatted print, and it's going to put our value. Enter. See that stress equals EE equals 5,000. See how nice that looks, that formatted print? Let's say we want to get fancier. Let's say, ah, no, Coburn wants us to use proper sig figs. Let's make this 6.3, and now we'll make it KSI. And so we're going to take the stress and we're going to print out the value divided by a thousand. That's going to take that stress value divided by a thousand. That's what it's going to write. And when we hit enter or our run, notice now it's five KSI. And actually that would be improper sig figs. We only, we only want to show one zero there. See how that works? We can make this even better by putting a new line up here. Now watch what happens, though, if we put a new line right in the middle. It's going to screw everything up. See how it broke up our statement? So that's how that new line thing works. Okay. Now what I like to do is I like to echo my properties. So let's go ahead and copy what we did with this fprintf thing. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's write it three times. The first time, we're going to say, what is our input? Let's say input value of E equals, and we're going to need, uh, let's make this, uh, let's make this 8.2. We're going to make this MSI. And we're going to have E over 1 in E6. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to print out our stress, or excuse me, our strain. These are the two input values. Input value of epsilon. And we're going to make this 8.6. And what was our strain value? Yeah, let's do this times 10 to the 6th. E times 10 to the 6th. And then we're going to print out our... Okay, let's take a look at this. All right, let's go ahead and run our program now. Let's clear this command window so you can see the wonder. Just a little bit of programming, and it greatly improves our output. Check this out. We echoed our E, our Epsilon, our stress, and then we printed them out in nice format. Input value of E equals 10 MSI. Input value of E equals 500. Oh, that, we forgot to fix that. Let's go ahead and... Our units now are times 10 to the minus 6. Or uh, let's say this, or we can say micro. Inches per inch. That's better. So it's fun. We don't need all these extra decimal places. We can say 0.1 or something. So these are 500 
micro inches per inch since it's that times 10 to the minus 6. That's a common number. Or we, it's, sometimes it's easier just to look at it as inches per inch and not do the 1 over E6. So that's 500 micro inches per inch. Let's get rid of the 0 there. Make this even prettier. And our value of stress, 5 KSI. Now, if you take a look at this, you'll notice we didn't put an extra space here. That looks a little sloppy. These are indented, and that's not. We're going to make that a little prettier. Another thing now, see this all looks like crap now because now we have a nicer echo of results. So we actually don't want to see these when they're calculated. So let's put a semicolon at the end of each of these, and that will tell it not to show what the value is. Also, this will look better. If we do, we can do this even better. Let's forget what we're doing here. Let's take this, copy this again. Now we're going to say, let's do this. Let's say uh, input variables. And then we're going to go to a new line. And we're not going to use any output with that. Then we're going to have, we'll indent this a little further, indent that a little further. And we don't want too many lines between them. So we'll use the, the deal at the, let's go ahead and use the starting one. Let's get rid of this one. So we'll print these close together. And then we will take this and we'll do, put another one down here. And let's say output variables. And then we're going to say stress equals. Let's see how that works. Now let's let's clean this up. Check this out again. Here we're going to run it. Now it shows our program name, input variables. Oh, look, we got too many. Let's see. We have our E. Let's not go to the new line here. Let's not go to the new line here. This might be confusing some of you, so let's go ahead and make this inches per inch. We're going to make that a 8.6. Let's make it 9.6 so we got room for it. And now we'll get rid of this extra multiplication. There, now let's see how it looks. You'll notice I'm running this program over and over and over again. And that's how I make all my programs. Every little change I run it, I see the result. Tweak it, see the result. Tweak it, see the result. Now, if we look at this, it looks pretty good. But look how it's sloppy and these E's don't line up. Let's fix that. See that? It's right there. Let's pull out a space there. And is the stress going to be lined up? Looks like the stress will. Let's try that puppy. And now everything lines up nicely. Looks like we want to space the stress. One more over. Let's save. Let's clear our command window. And let's run that puppy. We've defined our input variables. We've defined our output variables. See how clean that is? That is what you call good programming. You can add comments here to say modulus and so on. Let's say that we are writing a big program and once we get this debugged we don't want to actually have this going like page after page after page. You can actually in MATLAB put a bunch of commands on the same line. Just all they need to be is separated by either commas or semicolons. If there's a comma between them, it's going to print out the value of that when it sees it. If there's a semicolon between them, it will not print out the value, but it still calculates it and knows what it is. Let's see how this program works now. See, that works identically because we just collapse those. This, these spaces are optional. This is a very basic program. It's very simple, and it shows you some of the power of MATLAB. MATLAB will also do for loops and while loops and all kinds of other things. We'll look at those in other videos. We focus kind of on MATLAB in this video, and we've also looked at some basic stress calculations. And I'm going to encourage you students
to practice even the simplest problems in your statics dynamics strength one strength two classes and to start developing the skill programming once you've solved them by hand write a little program to run it and that way you start developing honing your skills by the time you get to composites and finite elements you will be a master of MATLAB. Uh, for engineers, same story. Practice. If you have MATLAB available at your company, start practicing making your little problems. Once you solve them by hand or using whatever tools you need to use, practice making a little program to do that. And it will uh, enable you to do magic. So, folks, I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you find that useful. Practice these techniques. The best way to learn MATLAB is to have the MATLAB window open and try things out. Program as much as you can, and practice, practice, practice. Stay tuned for more videos. Be sure to subscribe to stay connected with the content as it expands and develops. Enjoy.